Hey folks, this is Dan, and in this video we're going to talk about timbre, overtones, and the harmonic series. In music and sound, we use the word timbre to describe the individual character of an instrument or voice. Timbre is the reason a piano, a guitar, and a violin all sound different from one another, even if they're playing the same note or pitch. However, in order to understand why they sound different, we're going to analyze their sound using a type of tool called a spectrogram. A spectrogram is a visualization of sound, where the x-axis represents the sound over time, and the y-axis represents the frequency content of the sound. The brightness of any given area on the graph shows us how loud that frequency is over time, the brightest being the loudest, and the darkest being the quietest. When we examine our piano, guitar, and violin, using a spectrogram, we begin to see certain patterns emerging in our visualization. The horizontal lines you see represent both the fundamental tone and the overtones, which together comprise the instrument's harmonics. The fundamental tone is the lowest frequency tone, or the first harmonic and its frequency is how we determine the pitch of the sound. In this case, the frequency on our spectrogram reads 220 hertz, or 220 cycles per second. A frequency of 220 hertz matches A3 on our musical scale. That's the A below middle C. The horizontal lines above the fundamental tone are the sound's overtones, and along with the fundamental, make up the sound's harmonic series. Frequencies that are part of this harmonic series make up the sound's tonal information, whereas sound that is not part of this content, like the noise of a piano hammer striking the piano string, or the gritty sound of a bow hitting the violin strings harshly, add non-tonal character to the instrument's sound. Returning to our original spectrograms, you can see the strength and duration of individual harmonics all help to define the characteristics, or timbre, of the given instrument. Notice how the violin's fundamental is nearly inaudible. It has more emphasis in the higher harmonics, resulting in a harsher or more nasally timbre when comparing it to the guitar or piano. Despite this, we still perceive the instruments as sounding the same pitch. This is more obvious when we compare our violin to a different violin performance. Finally, you may have noticed that all of these instruments' harmonics follow identical frequency patterns. This is due to the physics of sound and vibration, and it results in a very simple mathematic series we call the harmonic series. Without going too deeply into the mathematics of this series, which comes from experiments plucking strings of different lengths, for now, we'll just derive a simple calculation, and that is, when given any fundamental frequency, each harmonic can be calculated by multiplying the fundamental with the harmonic's whole number order in the series. 
That means the first harmonic frequency is equal to the fundamental frequency multiplied by 1. 1 because it's the first harmonic in the series. The second harmonic frequency is equal to the fundamental frequency multiplied by 2. 2 because it's the second harmonic in the series. Then, as you might predict, the third harmonic frequency is equal to the fundamental frequency multiplied by 3. The fourth harmonic frequency is equal to the fundamental frequency multiplied by 4. The fifth by 5. The sixth by 6. And so on. This is highly useful to know as an engineer or producer, because it becomes a quick way of mapping out the location of any voice or instrument's frequency content. Knowing this simple math will allow you to find frequency information for an instrument based on its pitch without looking at the spectrogram. That means an electric bass playing a low E at 82.4 Hz is going to have important frequency content at 82 Hz, 164 Hz, 247 Hz, 329 Hz, and so on. With this in mind, you can begin thinking of harmonics as the ingredients or DNA that go into making an individual instrument or voice sound the way it does. In fact, there's an entire field of sound design called additive synthesis that uses the combination of pure tones across the harmonic series in different amounts and ratios to create new and interesting instruments and sounds. In the following experiment, I've loaded a single waveform's harmonic series into my DAW and inserted an oscilloscope, which represents amplitude over time, to examine the sounds in real time and compare the different frequencies and outcomes of soloing or muting harmonics. Along with this video, you'll find a zip file containing audio and picture assets, so you can explore how harmonics can help shape the timbre and form of the sounds we hear. To recap, in this video we learned that an instrument's harmonics are made up of a fundamental frequency and a series of overtones, which follow the harmonic series. We learn that the harmonic series is a simple mathematical series where the fundamental frequency is multiplied by whole numbers according to the order of the harmonic in the series. We saw that a sound's pitch is equal to its fundamental frequency, and that an instrument's timbre describes its sonic character, and that this depends greatly on the strength and duration of individual harmonics. Finally, we learned that we can combine pure tones along the harmonic series to create new and interesting sounds and waveforms. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and the next time you hear a sound or instrument, think about how its harmonics make it stand out or sound different from other instruments or sounds.